Hi everybody, it's Jenny, and today I'll be sharing a Not Too Shabby Design Team project. And of course you can visit the shop at nottoshabbyshop.com to find the stamp set I'm using today. And that stamp set is the Food at the Park from Doodlebug Design. It's made up of all these super cute treat images as well as an ice cream cart. And I thought that would be super fun to color in with some no line coloring. So I'm going to start by stamping out all my images onto a piece of Arches watercolor paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some Ink on 3 Fade Out Ink. And I'm gonna make sure to add ink a few times to make sure I get a real crisp image on the rough watercolor paper. I have everything stamped out and off camera I went ahead and stamped out another sheet of images as well so I could have two of each image and for the no line coloring I'm going to bring in some distress inks as well as some Karen brush markers to color in my images. And I'm just going to add all my colors to this palette here by squishing out the ink pads and then scribbling on some of the color with the markers. So in real time, this one image took me about 45 minutes to color, so I had to speed this up quite a bit. But I started by working in sections and adding water to an area and then dropping in the color with a paintbrush. And then once that would dry a little, I would go back and build up the intensity and add in my shadows. And I'm really impatient, so I had to make sure to keep moving around to different areas of the image so that none of them would start bleeding together. So once I finished coloring my image, I went ahead and added that back to the Misty and brought in some Walnut Stain Distress Oxide and I'm going to use that to add the little face to each of my images. I decided to go with browns instead of anything that was supposed to be black just because I thought it looked a little too harsh against the no-line coloring. camera I went ahead and colored in the rest of my images, added the faces as well as some little blush cheeks with a R20 Copic and then went ahead and fussy cut everything out. So for my embellishments I had some ideas of the things I wanted to do and I pre-made some crepe paper rosettes as well as some shaker frames using some dies from my stash that kind of went with this collection. Along with the shaker frames, I also cut out some word dies from my stash, as well as heat embossed a bunch of the sentiments from the stamp set, and brought in the coordinating paper collection to this set. So next I'm going to play around with all the different elements, and I'm going to start by finding some papers to back my shaker frames, as well as which images I'd like to go with them.
So once I have my pattern papers picked, I'm going to trim them down for the backs of my shakers and continue to play around with the images and add some sentiments to each piece. idea of how I wanted my shaker pieces to look. I set those aside and started to work on the rosettes and I did that by pulling out some more of the pattern papers and bringing in some different circle dies from my stash, some scalloped and stitched ones, and then just started trimming out different sizes from each of the pattern papers and layering up those as well as the rosettes and my images until I liked how they looked. I thought I would add some more word dies and I tried to fit in this make a wish sentiment but it just didn't quite work so after playing around with it for a while I thought I could make it work by just using the wish word and so I took the rest off and then played around with the different images and then moved on to the next one. When I got down to my last few images it started to get a little tricky. I really wanted to add the different ice creams on this one, but because I colored them so similarly, I didn't really like the way they all looked together. So I kept just playing around with it and then eventually brought in some different pattern papers and switched up some of the images until I liked it a little better. So here I'm finishing up with the last rosette and adding in the final images. And we'll see in just a second the final layout of each of the embellishments that I decided on before gluing everything down. And even in the process of attaching everything and filling in my shakers, some things changed again. <laughs> but in the end, I'm really happy with how these turned out. And here is a closer look at each of the finished embellishments. I am so in love with these. I think they turned out super cute and they'd look great on a card or a scrapbook layout or 
just to look at for fun. <laughs> I think they're super cute. And for the rosettes, I did go ahead and add some black rhinestones as well. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.